so my name is Duff Bangs. I'm a creator, owner, principal, licensed architect for ModForm LLC. I'm a, a residential and small commercial uh, architect and project management practice. So I'll get into a little bit of my, my history, what, what led me to architecture before I get to, a little bit into my business here. So I, I grew up here in the Wenatchee Valley. <clears throat> I actually grew up on that side of the river. Uh, I still call it all one, one town, but it's, uh, so I attended Eastmont uh, High School uh, in the Eastmont School District over there. Um, my, my love for architecture started um, at a really young age. I think that stemmed from playing with uh, Legos and Lincoln Logs and Tinker Toys. Just, I just loved, had this fascination with building things and creating things and using my hands. And uh, I really enjoyed drawing, too, from a, from a young age. But funnily enough, I, I drew uh, floor plans and uh, elevations of homes. I'm not sure <laughs> why. Uh, so here I am in this fourth, fifth, sixth grade like drawing floor plans, and I don't know, I had this fascination with homes, probably, uh, I don't know, uh, this old house was on TV quite a bit at my house, so it's <laughs> probably some sort of fascination with that. But my, my parents encouraged me to pursue architecture from a real, really young age, and I just thought, hey, this is cool, let's, let's give this a try. So um, with that, I, I took, most of the classes I took in uh, high school were, were cent centered towards prepping for architecture school in, in college. And so I was taking things like math, science, you know, calculus, physics, but I was also taking um, a lot of like wood shop classes and construction tech classes because I wanted to look at this whole, the whole system of, of creating a building, not just the design side, but also the construction side. Like I feel like that's it's extremely valuable for uh, architects to know the construction side too, right? So it helps uh, uh, resolve details and you know what what have you. But um, so I graduated from Eastmont in 2000. I attended uh, WVC, got my AA, transferred to WSU, got my master's, bachelor's and master's in architecture, and then I uh, moved to Seattle, where I worked for a very uh, modern design build firm. And uh, that was a really great experience working for this firm. They, they were both design and builds. So it was both the architecture component, but also the construction component as well. So we would take projects from uh, the design inception all the way through a complete home. So that was, that was a great experience to have. And then it was also a very modern firm as well. So that was probably where a lot of my design sensibilities have come from, is focusing more on uh, modern-centric. Um, but after living in Seattle for about 10 years, 11 years, just never really felt that home. Didn't really feel like it was a really close, tightly knit community. Um, and also the weather was not, <laughs> not enjoyable <laughs> over there. So, um, so my, my wife, Ashley, and I, we decided that we needed a change from Seattle. We didn't know necessarily where we were going to go. We just knew that we needed to get out of Seattle. So, <laughs> so growing up here, I have uh, family and friends. And we thought, hey, let's just give Wenatchee a shot. Just uh, move back and see what happens. And if we love it, we'll stay. If not, then maybe we'll move down the road. So we moved back and just felt welcomed immediately. Like, it's just, it's just a great community. Everybody's friendly. And you know, we were very, very happy to, to be here. And I'm happy to be back. And, but um, so Ashley, she's a social worker. She was able to find a job. And I was thinking I needed to find a job, I needed to make some money <laughs> also. So I looked, you know, I thought about, it seemed like there's two paths. I could, I could take the, the more traditional path and work for somebody and basically fulfill their career, dreams, ambitions, goals. Or I thought, well, or I could do that for myself. I could create my own thing and, and fulfill my own goals and aspirations. So um, at that point, I thought oh, I should I should uh, create my own business. But I didn't know much. I knew, I knew the process of architecture, but I didn't necessarily know the business of architecture, the business side. It's a part that you don't learn much in school, probably any discipline, unless you're um, uh, in business school. So with that, ModForm LLC was born. So 
that's, uh, like I mentioned before, I specialize in residential uh, design and uh, small commercial design with the emphasis on uh, modern design as well. So looking at uh, filling a void or filling a niche for modernism in uh, Wenatchee Valley, North Central Washington area. So um, is that a minute or is that? Got 30 more seconds. Got 30 more seconds? Okay. Uh, I can, I can read. Uh, it's good, I and mean, I've, I've been in practice for a year and a half now, and I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I've learned quite a bit before um, I started the business, but a lot of it was just reading books, listening to podcasts, um, just trying to learn as much as I could from that side, and uh, yeah, and I just you know putting all those pieces together, it, it's uh, fairly. I shouldn't say simple necessarily, but it's it's a service based business so there's there's I don't have to worry about I'm not creating a product so there's there's that whole side of a business that I, I think would be very complex but being a service based I'm the sole uh, proprietor uh, it's fairly fairly straightforward <laughs>
Um, but I don't know if that would be a similar model where it's kind of a test trial of, of finding interns who are still attending school and working you know, short bits of time. But I think that works in the architecture industry fairly well. But, and they're paid. They have to be paid as <laughs> architect interns. But yeah. You're hitting it right on. I heard I heard a podcast that talked about this the other day too. Um, I know this is a good point. I think that's that's something I have to um, do some soul searching on because you know I've got into the industry to be an architect, right? The love of design, but I think there is a point where you you're saying exact like you do have to if you want to be the business owner. There there is a point where you eventually just kind of give up the architecture side and become. Or you hire someone to do that. You are hired. That's a good point. Yeah. You're helping me find problems. That's, <laughs> that's, that's No, no, that's really that is really helpful though. I mean that that is helpful. I think that's I mean, yeah, I mean if anybody else has problems too to, for me to think about. No, I, I and it's it's true because these are sort of things that I need I I don't even know these problems exist. They're going to exist, but these are sort of things that it's really important to think about. And, so I don't, I don't have an answer for you, but I'm going to start thinking about it today. <laughs> and, yeah. So I might have a solution for these uh, problems that we're creating for you. <laughs> sure. Uh, a couple of books that are, are coming up to mind, and I'm sure several of us in the room have read these already, but Radical Candor by Kim Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you've read it. I'm, no. I'm, re I'm listening to it right now, and she's going into how to manage people mm -hmm. uh, and how to, how to help people understand if they want to be a manager themselves. Oh, uh, interesting. And so it's something that you can apply as a leader in your company, but also mm -hmm. you can use it to do some self-reflection mm -hmm. about who mm -hmm. you are as, as a worker mm -hmm. in your own firm. Mm -hmm. um, she talks about superstars and rock stars and what she calls shooting stars. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that some people are really just solid rock stars in their role. Mm -hmm. So if your role is as an architect, be a rock star in your role. Or mm -hmm. you can be a superstar, meaning that you want to try managing and being an architect and then moving on and on and on up the levels. And then shooting stars are just people who are going for the top mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as fast as they can. Interesting. Uh, the okay. other one, and I, I, I forget who the author is, but the title of the book, and I don't think it's been released yet, but I heard, of, heard him on a podcast interview is, um, I think it's John Maxwell, and the title of the book is Leadership, and Shift. he's talking okay. about the importance of um, how we lead in companies today and, and how that leadership is shifting from you know the times of 25 or 30 years ago when mm. our parents were working mm. for corporations. Being a leader means a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think those might be good books for you to, to read through or to listen to and yeah. whether you want to be a manager or an architect and how to share your vision with I imagine when you hire on a second architect, you're mm. going to have a very clear vision of what you want this firm to be so that that person can come alongside you yeah. and shine in that mission. That's very good. That's a very good point. Uh, uh, online. So it's, it's um, a physical, I don't have the physical uh, gallery necessarily, but everything's digital, right, as, as far as... Um, Address? Uh, 218 South Mission Street. <laughs> no, but so, are you online? Oh, uh, uh, email address. Yeah, it's modformllc.com. Um, yeah, so I have a portfolio of work from my previous firm and then projects that I've been taking on uh, here in North Central Washington as well. The projects that you've taken on uh, in this one-ish year of your business, mm -hmm. where do you find these clients? Are you working directly with homeowners? Are you working with builders? Or how, what, how are you navigating that? Yes, yeah, so it's, prim it's primarily uh, homeowners at this point. Okay. And uh, since the type of design I'm doing is, is primarily custom design, uh, when I moved here, I did, that was part of my networking uh, marketing uh, plan was when I got here, I reached out to real estate agents, builders, just any way I could. You know, these are, these are the sort of people who 
are on the, I, I call it the front line, right? As soon as somebody wants a home, they're purchasing a home from a real estate agent, and they say, okay, now I want to remodel this. Do you know any architects? So that was, that was my plan to reach out to real estate agents. But builders, similarly, um, people will reach out to a builder initially, and same deal as if the project is becoming custom or something, they're, they're going to need to uh, find an architect or designer to, to draw those plans. So, and that's actually worked uh, extensively. And now people are just finding me um, just through uh, SEO online, just, just you know, Google search, basically, architect Wenatchee, and it, come, it comes up. Do you yeah. have all the business you want right now? Uh, yeah. Are you, are you in a, I mean, are you at capacity for where you are right now? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm well above and beyond capacity right now. Uh, as, that's another problem. That's another yeah, problem. yeah, so, but no, that's a good point. And I'm always looking, I'm always thinking of the six month and then the 12 month steps beyond that, right? So, so if there's projects that people are thinking about, and I really encourage people to also as, as they're thinking about design, really think about it early on, because I do have people occasionally come in, hey, can you draw this starting next week and have it done for me in three weeks? And that's not realistic whatsoever. So I encourage people to think more in the three to six month range, and, and that actually helps me to plan my schedule as well. So, yeah. So with regard to that, and back to the administrator versus architect, because this is the same in all professions, mm -hmm. you might want to start keeping a time diary for how much time you're spending on architecture and how much on business. Mm -hmm. Because when you think, and you're thinking about, I'm going to hire another architect because I'm so busy, mm -hmm. an architect is more expensive than an office manager. True. And so when uh, you get your time break out, mm -hmm. and a lot of veterinarians do this, they're like, oh, I've got to hire another vet. No, you need to hire a manager, and then you can be a vet full time which goes back to when, when you're bringing okay. your income mm -hmm. and you're spending X amount of time being a manager, then, then you're billing yourself as a manager. Gotcha. You, right? okay, yeah. So you want to bring in somebody who doesn't cost as much as you to do that part. I and see. Then you hire that's, that. yeah, and I do, that's a great point. I do, I do track hours and all that as well, but, um, but that's, I didn't think about it in, in that, okay. yeah, because I'm essentially charging the same amount yeah, across right. the board. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> that's no, that's a, a good point. Yeah. So Deb, just to interrupt really quickly, um, well, this will be our last question because I'm doing and we're keeping him on time. I do have to run, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so go for it. Yeah. So this is just a quick one. It sounds like you're on the cusp of hiring someone and it's not quite clear who that might be. <laughs> but um, one thought to keep in mind is if you can get advice on that, it'd be at the forefront mm -hmm. because often when you're hiring an employee, there's certain things you want to have in place when they start as opposed to six or 12 months later when you realize there might be problems. And so I would gotcha. just encourage you to reach out for like, legal help and there's a cost benefit that mm -hmm. you have to weigh with that. It feels really expensive as an entrepreneur to have to pay someone by the hour for advice, but a little bit at the front end might save you later. And um, there's a local organization that's great. It's the mm. Apple Valley Human Resource Association. Oh, okay. And okay. It's HR professionals from the Valley. They get together in meetings and share advice and information. Uh -huh. um, it's really inexpensive to join and it's, you'll get hooked in with the right network of people. That oh, cool. Okay. Okay. So that cool. now that we've given you all kinds of problems to worry about, <laughs> <laughs> you have to take a look at these people and realize that the answers and the help you'll ever need is all right here. Yeah, and yeah. That we know. So thank you so much for taking the time to thank be here today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. This